Hey, so what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Exposed. We're back at my kitchen table. We're going over zines even further. This episode, I wanted to break down my zine and go through, just show you guys a little bit of the concept behind it. Some of the reasons why I laid it out and chose the, the layout and design that I did. And then we're gonna just kind of walk through. I'm gonna go page by page and just kind of give you an overview of, of what I was thinking to kind of help you in the, the layout and thought process of, of your zines. So a couple things that I wanna point out is one, uh, it's a very busy day outside, so there's probably gonna be a lot of background noise. Hopefully the mic doesn't pick up as much of it as I'm hearing. Um, but then two, this episode and the next episode actually go hand in hand. So. Once the next episode comes out, I'm gonna go over, really like dive in deep to how I laid out all the images, how I paired up the images, how I went through that whole initial culling process. And then we're gonna go into some of the, the programs and software that you can use or that I think that you're gonna have on your computer uh, to design and, and lay out your own zines. So um, that'll be the next episode. These episodes kind of go hand in hand. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this. You may wanna refer back to this one as you're going through the next episode when I release that. So here we are. Again, like I said, we're at my kitchen table. Uh, I got my My Kind of Town zine right here. Um, I do wanna say that this is officially sold out. I officially sold all 100 editions. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. So thank you guys for everyone who, who made the purchase. Uh, this zine went very quick, I'm very happy. I think it sold within, what was it, three months ago that I, I launched this zine. So um, selling 100 copies within three months, I'm just very grateful for that. So if you are one of the ones that made the purchase for this zine, I really do appreciate that. Um, a cool thing is, if you do have a copy laying around, I really encourage you to bring out the actual hardcover copy and go through it that way as we're going through this. There's just a different tangible element of being able to see what I'm talking about as you're holding it in your hand and, and that kind of thing. So uh, this entire project is based around Chicago. My wife and I, we live out in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're about three hours away from Chicago. So I try and make it out there a couple times a year as often as I can. And when going through and trying to figure out what the first zine project that I wanted to do was, I had a bunch of different, like I have a few other ones that I'm currently working on and I could have done those first or, or this one first. And I just really thought that this would have been an easier project just to get out there and get the momentum rolling because it's geographically themed, but also there's, there's another theme on top of that uh, that I'll go over here in a second. So to start off with the cover, the entire um, cover is actually one large image that's folded in half. Uh, I debated really on a, a lot of different things. I thought about making this image smaller. I had a couple other images that I was gonna try in the front cover. Uh, but I really thought that this one is just kind of the cityscape looking down the, uh, the river here. Was just a, a great first opening image to get people kind of acquainted with the zine and the whole concept and you know, this says Chicago to me and just wanted to go. My Kind of Town, I actually based that off of, there's a Frank Sinatra song called My Kind of Town where he talks about Chicago. And, Chicago very much is my kind of town. I love the big city feel. I love uh, just everything about Chicago, but I also wanted to, uh, to bring a musical reference into it. So to touch a little bit more on the musical reference part of this whole project is, uh, if you look at the, the front cover, I have here a quote from Bill Evans, who's a uh, jazz musician. Uh, the, the entire project, I wanted to kind of base around this idea and the whole concept, the whole question I was asking myself, and I'm gonna go over the idea of asking yourself a question. I really think that uh, so oftentimes we can really base the success off of a project, unfortunately, comparing it to other projects from other photographers. Uh, I was just actually talking to someone this morning on Instagram and and the whole concept of, man, my, my images are never gonna compare to, you know, um, Elliot Erwitz or, or any of the greats that way. I, I think if we, if we start trying to compare our images to other photographers, they think in a different way than we do, they see things in a different way than we do. Our images are never gonna live up to the legend that we see other people as. So I think really kind of giving yourself a good question, a solid question to ask, um, much like my question here of, how would I build a jazz composition, a musical jazz composition using visual images to build that composition, if that makes sense. So I'm not a musician by any means, uh, I don't, play any instruments, I'm not musically gifted by any means, but I do love, love, love listening to and just being inspired by music, and jazz is a big music that inspires me. So I really wanted to take the 
musical aspect and the musical heritage of Chicago and really bring it into just a, a booklet and a book that's honoring to that culture. So um, hopefully it's honoring to it. I've heard some, some good responses back so far. So anyways, I'll explain that concept a little bit more as we go in and the whole jazz song and everything. Uh, as we go through the, the pictures, I think it'll, it'll start to come out and, and kind of show itself in a, a bigger way. But I will say that initially I was gonna write out like a paragraph or two and just really kind of introduce the, the project and kind of put some of what I was just saying into words. But I came across this, this quote by Bill Evans that says, you can't explain jazz to anyone without losing the experience because it's feeling, not words. And when I read that, I actually, like, I realized that, that part of the project and part of the magic of it, I, I would explain away if I, if I really did start to uh, open it up and, and kind of catalog what it was gonna be. So digging into the zine, I started off with a, just a, a simple base cover. Um, it has the, the same image that's on the front cover and then the title once again. Sticking with this whole jazz theme, uh, I really wanted to kind of introduce the song by introducing the players, and I, I really like love this image. It kind of looks like it's a, uh, a just kind of a jazz or a rock or a blues team kind of coming out of the you know like either before or after a show. And uh, I don't know these these guys just feel like musicians or Chicago musicians or just Chicago players, you know, um, to me. So I wanted to start the book off and kind of introduce as if as if this was the jazz team that was going to be playing the song. Uh, that goes right into the end. So I, I did this full page spread here, um, borderless, and, and just kind of really wanted this image to stand out and just really introduce um, also the, the grain and texture of what the rest of the book is going to look like. Continuing that narrative on, I, I kind of have this, this idea of you know the, the taxi cab that brings you into the, the venue that's gonna play the, uh, the music for you. This is either the venue or it's also introducing the uh, musical instruments that's going to compose the rest of uh, this zine and this storyline and this jazz song that goes on. Uh, one of the big things that I, I oftentimes get a lot of people that mention the black backgrounds and then I, I kind of transition over to these white backgrounds, these super contrasty jumps between. And one of the things I love about jazz music is there's, there's a lot of highs and lows and it rises and falls and just kind of goes all over the place and kind of builds this like... Uh, emotional roller coaster, if you will, that that really kind of takes you on this journey. And I wanted to do the same thing with with going between these stark blacks to these stark whites. Also, if you look, there's there's a giant theme that goes in throughout to where you kind of go from low to high, even with the the camera vantage angles. So down here you got low. All of a sudden you start to look up. You got high, and then continues on, you go back down to these lows, back down to the dark backgrounds and kind of the moody notes and everything here. So I'm gonna take a step back though. So in pairing these images, again, like I said, it, I really wanted this page and this spread to really kind of play off the, the high scenes and then the bright whites. So I really loved that the, the whites in the sky here kind of would bleed into the, the background. That's also the reason why I shrunk it down because I wanted to get all this negative space around here, but then kind of have this full page bleed over on this side. Um, again, you have like the spectator, you're putting more of a uh, skyline to the Chicago um, scene here. You start to see the Navy Pier and the Ferris wheel there, and then some of the, the buildings and skylines over at uh, Chicago. Like I said, this spread is supposed to go back down to kind of the lows and the, the ground level. Um, I love the, the motion in both of these. Both of these are very blurry and imperfect, much like the notes within a jazz song. Um, so I really like pairing these together. I also, I tried to play a little bit with composition that that really kind of made me feel uncomfortable. For me, working in graphic design for so long, I actually, I can't stand when, when there's actually a person walking this direction when they should be walking in towards the next page. And there's kind of this, this pull in this like kind of tension that this wants to lead your eyes this way, but then there's a swirl that brings you back around and into this page. And, and I just really like that, that kind of like tension, that visual tension that pushes you off this way, but then your eyes kind of have to go over this way. And I feel like it, it at least in my mind, kind of represents the tension that is a jazz song to where oftentimes guys like Coltrane and Miles Davis would, would really kind of do these, these uh, instrumental runs that 
almost didn't make any sense or very avant-garde kind of all over the place there was a lot of tension but at the same time they were harmonious and would bring you back in with the uh the overall scale and elements of of the the whole composition so that's kind of what i wanted to do with this scene so going into the next spread again we see this this down low i absolutely love and i always get comments about how just the the blacks really just fade in like this could almost be an entire image by itself um, even though this is just the image down here um, but you go back down to the lows and then this leads you up to the highs that are going to be on the next page but again the blacks are really falling into um, the page the composition of the different images so um, instead of just putting them in the center both and kind of have that give your mind an idea of I wanted to really like lead your eye up and into the next page and I just wanted you to feel like you're almost climbing these stairs and climbing the uh, the instrumental runs as they go up then into this next spread where you're actually looking up at the sky looking at these seagulls flying by this is a shot that I originally threw out. I kind of just chalked it off as a failed shot. I wanted to actually have three of the different uh, seagulls flying around in the scene. And, and because I didn't have the rule of thirds uh, within there, I, I just kind of deemed this as a, a failed image. But as I was going through and I was listening to different jazz musicians and their ideas about, about jazz, I started seeing that um, failed notes within jazz was actually something that was meant to be embraced. So I actually challenged myself to put some shots in here that uh, that I wouldn't have initially put in here because I thought that there were failures, thought that there were the missed notes, if you will. But really going through and, and hearing a lot of what these guys were, were thinking and um, how they approached their music, I was really encouraged to, to just put some of these in there. And as a entire song, it actually makes sense. Whereas in an individual image, it kind of fails in my opinion. So in the next spread, I, I transitioned back down to where you're looking up at the transit car going by, but then you're back down onto the streets. I also love the juxtaposition of looking up and having this be on the, the lower side of the, the page and then leading into looking up, but having it be a lower angle. And uh, I just, I love how the, the complexity of it. Also, graphically, I, I laid it out this way because if you look at the, uh, the line of the railroad car or the uh, transit car actually travels through and into the image here and it kind of leads your line right into these guys and bringing you back up. And again, that's that tension of, of just notes where um, high notes are played at a low angle and then low notes are played at a high angle or however that translates to you. Um, but again, that's just a, another way of of really just going through. Um, again, this is another like place setting. Uh, this to me, just every time I go to Chicago, it's just you hear the the transit going by, you hear the the just the sounds and the visceral, like just everything happening there. You could feel the ground shake as it comes by. And then uh, just again, these characters that really just embody the culture of, of Chicago and just the diversity of style and character. And I love the guy's hat. I love that their face is going to, to silhouette and the silhouette matches the same blacks that's on the page. And then we transition back into stark whites again, looking back up towards two similar images to where uh, we pair different um, birds. In my mind, it's much like the idea of playing a same note, but in a different way. So very much the same kind of composition to where we're looking up, the birds off to the top right. And, uh, but playing it in a different way, having this one smaller, having it be a, a bordered image, this one be a full page spread. I just like comparing and, and just pairing these up in a way that play well off of each other and say the same thing, but at the same time say different things. Then going into the next spread, again, we're, we're carrying a theme on, carrying a note into the next spread to where we're continuing the, the story of the American flag here, looking up, very grainy, very gritty. Here on this page, Again, we go back down low. Um, I bring in motion and blur here again, but then uh, bringing kind of a, this is shot with flash. This is very stark. So I like how the, the highlights here continue on and they kind of carry down here. So it's kind of this, this weird triangle that forms right here, but then uh, just this abstract shape that's being formed. Uh, I like bringing this one down, having this one up. They're, they're not very uh, traditionally paired as far as high or low or in the center or even, um, equally laid out on the pages, but just kind of dark and moody and just kind of gritty. Just continues on that that whole feel of dropping and, and spiking back up. Here on this page, we have a, just a very dark scene, um, very stark highlights, uh, just kind of this like, kind of this big bass drum kick to, to just kind of 
give this breathing space because there's a lot of black space out here and um, but also kind of this big like just bass drop another full page spread just a scene setting chicago pier um, scene going into again looking back up looking into the skyline having having just a low angle that kind of leads your eyes back up into uh to the high angle over here back down to the ground i love that the juxtaposition between um, the black background, or sorry, the white background here, and then the black, um, just kind of overall feel of, of this image. Um, same type of thing, both guys are, are leading you into the next page, but but there's just this, this motion, this blur, but then there's also this crisp, clean, um, even though this isn't outlined with black, there's just a lot of black around the edges here, and then obviously the white outline here. So it's very crisp and clear as it's being presented to you, but also very hectic and, and just kind of haphazard in the center. More of an abstract image, uh, full bleed, kind of makes you draw in, makes you kind of reflect and contemplate what's going on in the inside. Um, just, I, I love the, the fact that Superb shows up in here. And, um, just a lot of the different uh, just space to breathe, space to think, space to even kind of uh, pause and reflect on some of what happened in the past and, and led you up to this place. Going into another high scene, um, looking at the uh, Ferris wheel at the Navy Pier. Very bright, very airy, kind of gives you some, some time to pause again. Going back down to the, the ground level, um, looking way down low at a, uh, a pigeon down below. Then going back up to an eye level, very much a motion blur, kind of a, a hurriedness to each of these shots. Going into back up high, so you could see this this high and low, and the, the entire the entire zine was designed to hopefully bring you through just this this energy level of of just kind of running through all these highs and lows. And another thing, real quick, is if you do have a copy of the zine, I really encourage you to put on some some Miles Davis or some Coltrane or Bill Evans or something in the background and, and just kind of have a jazz music go through and as you're walking through the the just composition of the the zine kind of see how it pairs well with any of the composition of the jazz music that you're listening to or even blues and, and some blues rock and stuff like that I, I really feel like kind of translates well with this as well. This is another image that originally I just I kind of thought about tossing and I wasn't going to include in the zine but I really felt well that it paired with uh, with this image well and thought that it, it it played well to the overall story that was going on within the, the entire composition, whereas as an individual image, I think it, it just kind of, there's some emotion there, but it, like she's stagnant and just standing still, but at the same time, it's that stillness with all of the, the highs and lows and the running through that, that really kind of makes it stand out for me to where it is kind of paused, but there is motion to the image. and. It just, I don't know. I don't quite know what I'm saying, but uh, I put it in there and I think it works well. And at the end, I wanted to finish off with just what I felt like was a, a strong, just uh, finishing clashing of the symbols and and just, um, just overall lead out to the song, uh, a pigeon kind of flying out, the, the graphic elements of the, the leading lines leading you off into this bright and uh, almost like uh, stage exit or the, the uh, exit of a, a concert hall and anything like that but just leading your eyes out of the the zine and, and just into back into reality maybe even so one of the things I think worth pointing out right now is at the beginning I showed you we started off with with this image here I knew that I wanted to start off with this image I knew that I wanted to finish with this image and I also knew that I wanted this image here to end up nearly in the center of, of the zine so from there, I was actually able to build the rest of the story around that, knowing kind of I wanted to lead to this point and then I wanted this point to lead to this point. I think that's super helpful to know kind of where you wanna go with the zine. I think when you when you do get your images laid out going, okay, I feel like this will be a good, and you don't have to like, if I were to make a decision like, okay, this is how I wanted to start and then as I go through it, it starts to become something different, that's fine as well. But just having that initial idea of this is where I wanna start, this is where I wanna end, this is where I wanna go in the meantime, uh, just really kind of allows your, your mind to really answer those questions well as you're building the whole zine and as you're putting this whole thing together, the, the storyline will start to naturally unfold as you go through. So, and lastly, I finished off the uh, the back of the zine with 
Um, just an artist bio of myself and then uh, just some contact information. Down here is where I put the uh, edition number. So like I said, this was a, a limited run of 100 and I would write the number, hand wrote each of the numbers into, uh, into the spot there. So one through 100 and then I'd also sign and, uh, and just kind of finish the zine off that way. So one of the things I thought would be really cool to show you is actually one of these um, initial proof reviews. So you can see this is actually an uncut proof um, that my print shop gave me. This was the thing that we went through. We chose the paper types off of this. So I got a couple of these in different papers. Uh, you could also see that this is an earlier model. The blacks weren't as black as they are in the, uh, the actual final product. So one of the things I absolutely love about proofs like this is the wide margins here to where I could write down notes. So again, right here it says adjust grain, really that's just the sharpness of my scans of the film. So I went in and, and did a different type of sharpening for print, um, deeper blacks you can see here. As we go in, I actually wrote down a bunch of uh, jazz quotes that were really inspiring me as I was going through. Uh, logo on the right page here. So I started actually adding some elements in. Here I went through and started making, I, again, I was writing down some jazz quotes and everything here, but I started making some um, contrast and uh, exposure adjustments here. Crop down to, to fit. I had to crop this image down a little bit to, uh, to make it not dissect his head and uh, dissect over here instead. And you can see as I just go through, move further into the spread, if you actually look um, down at the bottom here, each of these numbers is actually what uh, I felt the actual spread should be. So this obviously was the first page, this ended up being the fifth page, this was the sixth. Um, fixed sharpening again. Highlights, I wanted this to go a little bit brighter. The shadows I needed to bring down, so again you could see in the, the updated print these darks and the, the shadows and the blacks here really bleed into the, the rest of the page. So most of it was, was notes on the um, blacks of the images. This I wanted to be the center spread. Again, blacks. This kind of gives you an idea of the process as I was going through. This is one of the things that I absolutely love about going through a local printer because you can get a print like this to where you could start making copies on, you could show your printer. Uh, even if, if the blacks here aren't printing as black as you want, you could bring that in and kind of show them, hey, this is what I want and this is, uh, this is what we're getting, but uh, I want to bump the contrast of the printing up or anything like that. That's one of the things that you can't really get when you're going through a large print shop. Um, they don't necessarily just give you uh, plenty of sample prints to go through. You, you get digital proofs, but um, you don't actually get uh, prints to go through and actually look at and hold in your hand and, and be able to make the fine-tuned adjustments about that. So that's one of the reasons why I love going with a local print shop and, and just really building that relationship with them so that they can help me get the best print quality uh, that we can get out of these things. So. So anyways, I hope that helps to, uh, to just kind of give you an idea of one artist's perspective when laying out their zine. Um, your zine doesn't have to look anything like this. That's the, that's the whole beauty of it is uh, you could find inspiration in this or you could just go, hey, I want mine to look absolutely the opposite. And, and that's, that's cool. That's, that's what it's, that's the cool thing about it. But like I mentioned on the next episode, I'm actually going to break down how I went through and culled through the images to, uh, to put this together, how I started the initial layout. And, uh, and then how I actually went in and designed the whole project on the computer to send out to the printer. So I'm gonna go into that next episode. Until then, again, I just wanna thank everyone that made a purchase on this zine and, uh, and helped me to sell this thing out. I, I really do appreciate that. I appreciate you guys going through and, and just showing the support. I appreciate the support of the channel so far. Uh, this has just been an amazing ride and I, I look forward to making so many more videos. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this whole thing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the project. Do you think it's a success on the way that I, I went through? Do you, like, as I was going through and saying that, can you actually see and, and, and like visualize the, the jazz song that I was talking about? I'd love to hear that. Until the next episode, I look forward to hearing your comments. Please like, comment, and share below. I appreciate you guys. And uh, until then, I got some film that I gotta go develop. So uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.